So a lot of my historical research is focused on the role that um, human-made habitats play in coastal urban ecology around the world. In particular, I'm interested in the role that things like offshore breakwaters, jetties, seawalls, and things like this play. If you look at most coastal cities, uh, if you take Manhattan as an example, or Shanghai, or even here in Abu Dhabi, the vast majority of the coastline that you have is now man-made. It's interesting to look at these new ecosystems in terms of how communities develop, what sorts of communities develop, how long does it take, um, do you get the same sort of species associated with artificial habitats that you do with natural habitats, and are there ways that we can mitigate some of these differences. I'm a geneticist by training, but I study how genes and the environment interact. I've been involved in the Thousand Genomes Project, which is a massive international collaboration. Uh, we've actually been looking at genetic variation or population genetics worldwide. But unfortunately, none of the Arab populations are represented in that project. So actually, Arab populations are understudied. We're talking about population that transited like in one or two generations from a very traditional lifestyle to a very urbanized lifestyle. That transition, in a sense, coincides with an increase in the prevalence of complex diseases. So whether you are talking about asthma, cancer, or cardiovascular disease, so you have this massive shift in numbers of people being predisposed uh, uh, or affected by those diseases. So the Emirati population, in a sense, uh, provides a unique opportunity to study those diseases. I'm working in the Public Health Research Center. So we're working on diabetes and the effect of uh, smoking and really different factors on diabetic and non-diabetic people in the Emirati population in Abu Dhabi. I've been diving and recording, um, recording people who are doing research, uh, just observing them, uh, catching fish and um, putting fish to sleep. Um, I've been also uh, looking for uh, examining tiles and looking for um, corals on the tiles under the microscope. So astrophysics is studying anything that's essentially not on Earth. So it starts from planetary physics, which would be other planets, Mars, you know, the Sun. Well, solar physics, the sun. And then it starts there and goes outwards all the way to the rest of the universe. People talk often about whether they're galactic astronomers or extragalactic astronomers, whether they study this galaxy or the other ones. Um, I'm an extragalactic astronomer because I like studying all the other ones. But in terms of scale, I study relatively local things, which means only within a couple hundred million light years. Um, instead of all the way back towards the beginning of the universe. My research mostly revolves around studying algae, uh, particularly its metabolism um, and its genomics and essentially um, how the organism, um, from the standpoint of its N normal biology where it lives, um, how it uh, survives various conditions and um, situations that it faces, as well as trying to uh, find algae that are suitable for use as uh, biofuel resources or other types of uh, biomass resources. My capstone is looking at the relationship between environment, phenotype, and genotype and I'm exploring this in algae, and I'm taking specifically strains from New York and uh, right outside here in Musafa, and I'm comparing them. Uh, they're comparing their metabolic preferences um, using a machine that we have in the lab that's really cool called the Biolog Phenotype Microarray. Uh, I'm sequencing their genomes, and then I'm also doing growth curves on them to uh, see their preferred growth temperatures.
the type of research that I do here uh, involves um, you know, carbon dioxide, a special form of carbon dioxide called supercritical. The coral will use its tentacles at night, so you don't typically see them during the daytime. They'll put tentacles out at night and feed off of the plankton and bring in nutrients. And they'll share some of those nutrients with the algae that are inside of their tissues. And in, in response, the algae does photosynthesis, just like most photosynthetic plants on uh, land do. And it'll feed some of those sugars to the coral. So they have this relationship. I would say that in science, much of the work that's being done is growing out of the notion that if I'm here, what are the problems that would be great to tackle here? And so it's, it's a natural evolution of the science.